this is an introduction to the tapes that you'll be seeing this semester for introduction to psychology. What I'd like to do is to give you an overview in this tape of where we're heading. And I want to use a very practical case example uh, of the application of psychology that illustrates this. When we talk about psychology, one of the perspectives that will run all the way through this course is a little different than what's stated in your text, but I think it's a very powerful idea. And that is, when we look at human behavior, we'll look at three aspects. Almost all the time, we'll look at the biological aspects of human behavior. We'll also look at what I call the intra, meaning within, intra-psychic. And that's not a psychic as you use the word psychic, but it's what's going on inside a person's mind. What are they thinking? What are they telling themselves? Those sorts of things. And then finally, the social behavioral. And this is the section of our behavior that involves our interaction with other people. So in psychology, there'll be three themes. One will be the biological aspects, what's happening physiologically to us, and our brain particularly. The intrapsychic, what are we telling ourselves, what's going on inside our mind. And the third is the social behavioral. How are we relating to our social groups, our parents, our family, everybody else? And to illustrate that story, I want to share a, a, a story that was uh, from the University of Michigan. And this is from James V. McConnell. who is now deceased, he had the uh, unfortunate distinction of being one of the people that the Unabomber sent a letter bomb to because he didn't like his research in psychology. One of his assistants opened up and blew his hand off. But James E. McConnell was a famous physiological psychologist. And he was at the University of Michigan one day preparing in his office to teach an introduction to psychology class, which was made up of several hundred students. And there came, came a young man at his door and introduced himself as Joey. And Joey was talking a mile a minute. He was jumping from topic to topic. He said something about Ypsilanti. He said something about a mental hospital. He said something about his mother. He said something about his father. And he just jumped from topic to topic and wanted help. He just really wanted help. And he wasn't one of McConnell's students, so James V. McConnell, Dr. McConnell, was a little surprised. And McConnell said, well, Joey, I'm really busy right now. I'm getting ready to teach a class, but why don't I meet you in two hours over at this bar across from the psychology building on campus? And he said, fine. So Joey went to the bar. Joey had a few drinks. And by the time McConnell got there after his class, Joey was talking even more wildly, more incoherently, jumping from topic to topic. There was not one sentence that was connected to the next sentence. He just kept jumping all over the place. Uh, some people might look at him and assume he was bipolar, had like a manic outburst at that time, didn't seem to be making sense. But Dr. McConnell looked at him very carefully, and being a physiological psychologist, he paid careful attention to how he was behaving, what he was saying, what he was doing with his arms, and all that sort of thing. And what he found out from the little bit of conversation he could find was that Joey had been uh, hit by lightning as about a, a young man or young boy, about 10 years of age, playing baseball. And the lightning strike had apparently done some brain damage. Well, Joey's sitting there, and he's just incoherent, and, and uh, Dr. McConnell has this hypothesis, an educated guess. And he's thinking, look, the sentences Joey is uttering make sense within each sentence. But when he finishes the sentence, it jumps to another topic entirely. It's like his brain is not focusing, and he hypothesized it was related to the brain damage. So we're dealing with the biological aspects of human behavior here. So he tried something immediately, a quick little experiment. It was every time Joey finished a sentence, Dr. McConnell would go, right, Joey, gotcha. And the minute he did that, Joey could focus, and the next sentence would follow logically from the first. So Dr. McConnell had a hypothesis. He tested it. It worked. But obviously, this didn't solve Joey's problems. Joey's problems are multi-caused. He then decided, OK, what's going on here? And he made an assumption that either there was damage done to the corpus callosum, let me spell that on the board, C-O-R-P-U-S-C-A-L-L-O-S-U-M, the corpus callosum, the band of fibers that connects the left brain and the right brain, or there was damage to the right brain, which is not, uh, generally not involved too much with speech. But McConnell argued that there was a section of the right brain that dealt with the uh, focusing and keeping attention from one sentence to a next. And he thought that that probably had been damaged. His hypothesis was tested by getting Joey's attention and focusing. But he also decided, 
well, what can Joey do to solve this problem and to deal with it very specifically? So he said, Joey, would you tap on your left arm? Would you rhythmically tap on your left arm? And magically, as long as Joey rhythmically tapped on his left arm, he could speak, he could uh, be coherent, sentences would follow each other, and things worked right. Now, why did this work? Well, you know that the brain has a left side and a right side. The corpus callosum we're talking about here is this band of fibers that connect the two brains, the left and right side. Uh, there are two speech centers typically in the left brain that you've read about in your book. And McConnell argued that there was something that helped assemble these, uh, these arguments so that sentences would logically follow one another in the right brain. So by tapping his left arm, where was that information going? Well, you know that we're kind of cross-wired. And that information, if you look at this, is the top of his head. If these were glasses here, so you can kind of see. <laughs> I love my arm here. All right. If this was the top of his head, his left arm is here. Where does information, sensations, from the left side of the body typically go? You're right. They typically go to the right side. We're cross-wired. So what McConnell had him doing was tapping on his left arm. Notice it wouldn't work if he tapped on his right arm. Tapping on his left arm, which was arousing the right brain enough to work and to follow the conversation. So as weird as that seems, we've got a biological explanation. Now, oddly enough, he started then picturing together, piecing together Joey's background. Joey had grown up with a mother and father. The mother was very caring, very close, emotionally sensitive. The father was absent a great deal, traveled a lot. And Joey then got struck by lightning. His mother overcompensated trying to be a great mom, and she just let him get by with anything. And he grew up to be a little brat. He's throwing fits, he's getting in all kinds of trouble, he's not getting his schoolwork done, he's dropping out of school, and he's getting in trouble with the law and things of that nature. Well, she got sick of it, and she threw him out finally. And he did get committed on her request to the Ypsilanti State Mental Hospital in Michigan. While he was there, he had neuropsychiatric evaluations. He'd had that prior in his history. Nobody could find anything that would solve his problem. McConnell, being a physiological psychologist, solved part of it immediately by having him tap on his left arm. But notice we've got two things to go yet. In this perspective, we've dealt with the biological perspective. And that's been very powerful already, just taking a look at that. But let's look now at the intrapsychic. We could actually take this many directions, but the intrapsychic level in this particular case, McConnell dealt with as well, and that was, he asked, what in the world is Joey telling himself about himself? And the answer was, Joey was telling himself every day he was a loser. Every day he was saying, I'm brain damaged, I'm an idiot, I can't accomplish anything. So it's obviously a very self-defeating attitude. And so Joey was referred by Dr. McConnell to a psychologist who specialized in rational emotive therapy type work, and uh, that's something we'll talk about on another tape, but basically it helps people take a look at their own thoughts and change their self-statements is one of the things they do in that therapy. So the intrapsychic was also approached here. Then finally was the social behavioral. By this time, Joey had made so many people mad in his family that nobody did want anything to do with him. So this is the interactions he's getting. And not only is he telling himself that he's a loser, he's getting feedback from his mom that he's not a good human being, he's not worth anything, he can't ever solve any problems. Uh, the people around have gotten used to him screwing up, and they expect him to be a screw up. So Dr. McConnell simply said, Joey, do you have any friends or family that live elsewhere that don't really know your situation that well, that you could go live with, like cousins? And they got to search around. They found some distant cousins out in California arranged for, Jer uh, for Joy to go out and stay for a while and eventually live there for a while once he'd gotten this previous therapy. And what happened was now he was in a new environment. And what happens when he's in a new environment? He's already solved the biological problem by tapping on his left arm, so he talks normally, so he appears normal to others. He is also solving the intrapsychic problem by telling himself, I'm brain damaged, but it's something I can handle. It really doesn't affect my basic personality, my intelligence, who I am, and now I can handle it because of this biological intervention. And then third, he's around other people who like him, who enjoy him, who are telling him he's not a loser, that he can do things. So now we have three things that Dr. McConnell has helped him do. So in 
uh, going through this course, always look for the biological aspects of behavior, always look for the intrapsychic, what's going on inside the mind, and always look for the social behavioral. What's the environment doing? How is he, somebody being rewarded or punished from the outside? Keep that in mind, this will help clarify things. Thanks.